good? And all the time. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, church? Amen? Amen. I invite you to take a look at your bulletin, and uh, we'll take a look at the announcements. The first is we will be having a PPRC meeting uh, in the library following worship service. So uh, uh, I hope you remembered, and I hope the postcards got out in time. Uh, we're continuing to look for volunteers. Uh, you can see that the July and August copies of the Upper Room are out there. Uh, the uh, July and August uh, newsletters have also gone out. If you didn't receive one of those, if you'll give Patty a call, we'll make sure to get your address either updated or added on. Uh, Marva Jean has moved to Sweetbriar, and uh, can I tell you, she's loving it there. That's the healthiest I have seen Marva Jean in quite some time. She was, uh, it, it's, it's like walking, still like walking into her living room, everything except... For her bed is hers, and uh, I told her the only thing we needed was to get her a little stuffed dog in the corner so she could pretend, to, pretend that it was Tim. And uh, she said to tell everybody that she misses everybody and she loves you, and to please come down and say hi. She loves visitors and phone calls, so uh, Marva Jean is doing well, and we are grateful for that. As always, if you would like to be a part of uh, any of the service, whether it's reading scripture or doing any of the prayers or, you know, singing with the choir, uh, you, you're, you're welcome to do that. And uh, feel free to get a hold of me and we will include you into that as well. Uh, as always, if you know anybody that would like a visit or a phone call from me, uh, you can uh, let me know. You've got the little tear off on your bulletin there that you can use. You can always give me a phone call or, or whatever, but just, just make sure, especially if you're telling me on Sunday that you write it down or it will have flown away long before, before the end of the service is actually over. Um, and then the flowers under the cross are in loving memory of Judy Stone by Bill. Uh, any, any other announcements? Did I miss anything? Anybody have anything they'd like to add? All right, then. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just rejoice that we have uh, this privilege to come and worship with you here this morning. We pray, Lord, that all that we do and say here, every prayer that we lift, every song that we sing, all of it, Heavenly Father, would be a sweet offering that would bring a smile to your face. And that as we worship, Lord, your Holy Spirit would minister to our hearts and draw us closer to you. Now, Holy Father, we just lift this up. All, all for you, Lord, all that it might just bless all of us gathered here and at home. And we just give you thanks in Jesus' name. And amen. All right, I invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn, Because He Lives. Oh, 
Amen. You may be seated. As my volunteers come and grab their microphones, I figure we might do our testimony time just a little bit different today. Uh, of course, if you have a testimony that you'd like to share, uh, you're more than welcome to. But I know uh, we are both in celebration and in mourning as a, uh, what has been a large part of our congregation went on to his eternal glory this last year. And uh, Richie, also known as what's his name, uh, did a phenomenal job of uh, celebrating his life. But I thought what I would invite us to do this morning, as, as alongside our testimonies are, if you have a, a story of how Tex has blessed your life, uh, I invite you to share it with us. And I'll start it off, uh, I've always called Tex kind of my spiritual grandfather. Uh, you, you heard the name Jeff Arthur mentioned a few times at the service. Jeff Arthur is the pastor that led me not only into the faith, but into the ministry. So it's, uh, you can see how faith works. Tex ministered and blessed into Jeff. Jeff blessed and ministered into me, and I hope I'm blessing and ministering into others. But uh, I am thankful for that. So, would you share? Probably about 32, 33 years ago, and some of you know this. I was right out of seminary, and uh, I was pastoring Reynolds Memorial over in Marmette. And I called Tex, I didn't know him at the time, and asked him to come and hold revival for me. So for a week he came and preached, and we had different choirs coming in from different areas and so forth. And uh, we had a group from over at Ashford, uh, my own chapel that came and sang. And uh, they kept popping up and sharing testimonies. And pretty soon I called it popcorn testimonies and Tex and I anyway had the best time with those people and everyone all week long and have been friends ever since and that goes back to uh, the early 90s 90, 90 91 somewhere thereabout when he came and held that revival and, and we just been had been friends ever since and I'm just excited that uh, I was when he came here and I could come and be a part of the congregation amen bless you Well, I have one, and I was thinking about that because of the date. Yeah, sit there and look at me like you do, Mom. Um, 16 years ago, we thought my mother was having a heart attack. And long story short, we um, gather, and she has a heart catheterization done, and Tex was there, and we were told, that the surgeon was talking to her about surgery. And <laughs> she looked at him and said, what are you waiting for? <laughs> I don't want to wait to do it. You do it now. So the surgeon comes in to talk to us, and just as he is going back, here comes Mom. They will her by. And Texas is standing there. I say, we all say, we love you, Mom. We'll see you when you get done. And Tex is right there with Mom. And as they're willing her to surgery, he walks his brisk walk <laughs> with her, praying with her, till they wouldn't let her go through, let him go through the door. And I'm just so blessed that our family got to know him and that he was with my mother before surgery. Bless you, I don't think that there's anybody here that uh, Tex hasn't helped in some way, shape, or form. Um, when I was privileged to lead the men's walk to Emmaus a few years back, he came to uh, give one of the talks at the walk. And, uh, you know, I can honestly say for myself, he's been a good friend. Goodness to uh, to know Tex was to to love him, and, and uh, I like what she said. I I call it uh, along my way in my walk some heroes of my faith, and and Tex surely was, and uh, and surely it was God working through him that led me back to Christ in a much advanced age, uh, about ten years ago, and also was baptized. But uh, just amazing, loved him dearly. Bless you. I, like everyone here who ever knew Tex, to knew, know him was to love him, 
and he was a blessing just the first time you met him. And if he met you one time, that was it. You, you were hooked as a friend. And a lot of you know this story, but I'm going to repeat it because, gosh, it's so worth repeating. And after I repeat it, I'll tell you what, what the biggest blessing was for us on the day that he was laid to rest. Um, apparently, and Kip and I did not have any idea about this story. When Meredith was five is when Tex first came to church. And on his first Sunday, it was the Sunday before we were getting ready to leave on vacation. And I remember her going and talking to him, but I didn't know what was said. And she tugged at his robe and she said, Preacher, um, I'm going on vacation next week, but when I get back, can you marry me? <laughs> and he said, um, well, I'll have to ask Devonna, but I think we might be able to work something out. <laughs> so when she got engaged, she knew that she wanted to call Tex to marry her. It happened to be the last thing that he performed ceremony or service and he said at the beginning like he does at every wedding at the beginning he turns off the microphone and has some words to the bride and groom well meredith had remembered the story not exactly everything but she remembered being embarrassed that when she was five she said that to the preacher <laughs> but jacob had never heard it so he, he, before the ceremony started and before he turned the microphone back on, that's what he, he told them to kind of break the ice. Now, here's the rest of the story. And this is how God works. There's a gentleman by the name of Mitchell Dyer who was our videographer from Corbin, Kentucky. And I messaged him to tell him that Tex had passed and that I hoped when we received the video that his voice was in there several times because it would be a true blessing to all of us and his family. And he reassured me that it was. But as Kip and I left the cemetery, I turned my phone over and I had an email from Mitchell and he said, I have a surprise for you. I have the entire audio of the wedding and it's all Texas voice and he emailed it to me and the first part of it was just text messing around with the groom and the boys and talking about it was just the funniest stuff it was when I was talking about thinking about getting a tattoo and text told him if he got a box of Cracker Jacks there was usually a, <laughs> a little piece of paper in there if you, if you wet it it would give you a, a tattoo and they all got a big laugh out of that and then the next thing before the ceremony um, Tex had a great relationship with Sonny he could rein him in very quickly and talk to him and and Meredith had entered the wedding in Sonny's old Cadillac and Tex said, well, look at that. Isn't that appropriate and special? We got all this on the audio and then the entire ceremony it was just his voice. And I'm telling you, I know it was God's work. And I, I, it, was just, it was just amazing that we have that. And so thank you, Nathan, for giving us the opportunity to say these things about our past pastor that we all love very dearly. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Bless you. Well, just to go back a little, I grew up in a very different type of church with a very different type of pastor. Um, we'll sneak snakes in for you next week. No, there, there were no snakes involved. My, my dad always said, God gave you enough sense not to handle that snake to begin with. But I had gotten away from church for quite some years, and some of you have heard that story. I won't go into it, but... When I first began dating Chuck, he said, we're going to go to church. My parents were thrilled. Uh, but I came here and the pastor was Tex. I can't tell you what it was like going from lots of yelling and things to Tex with, uh, as, as you were just talking about, Deanna, his sense of humor. Yeah, the, the rocking. Every time he would get excited, he would start like shifting his feet. How many times did we see him take the notes that we know he had worked so hard on for a sermon and just throw them down? I, I think I had been here 
maybe a month, maybe two months, when he did that and he looked at, out at the congregation and smiled and began singing Purple People Eater. <laughs> and that was the basis for his sermon. <laughs> but I really believe that not only did Chuck bring me back to God, but Tex showed me a new side. He showed me a difference in church and a difference in the way people could be. And most of you know that Chuck and I eloped because when you're one of six, there's no such thing as a small wedding. <laughs> but what many of you don't know is that about a month later on October 13th, which was the anniversary of our first date, uh, that was a Sunday. We wore the same clothes that we wore at our wedding and after everyone left, our families came and text blessed our marriage. Um, we were okay having the legalities done wherever, but we wanted our, the blessing of our marriage done here. And I think the only person that was, was not a family that was here, which is, is family, uh, was Robin. And she said, so she could take pictures. But he, he was a blessing, and you are a blessing, Nathan. And as Deanna said, I absolutely echo it. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Any others? Um, Tex changed my life. He was not my pastor, but um, on my walk to Emmaus, I was introduced to the <clears throat> Wesley means of grace, and he is the one who taught me about prevenient grace, the grace that woos us and chases after us until we finally give up and say yes to God. And I had never experienced a God like that before. And it was, it was wonderful to know that this man could represent to me a God of love. And um, he was very, very close with Victor. And Tex and Devonna actually came to our wedding. And I was very surprised that, to have this man who meant so much to the both of us there. And I also thank you for allowing us to do this. As you all know, about 13 years ago, our, grand, our daughter in law passed away. And our grandchildren was 10 and 7 at the time. And they were having a difficult time. So I called Tex, and he came down, and he spent between at least 30 to two minutes to an hour just calming them down and soothing them. That's the type of person Tex was. His personality was just soothing. So, and we appreciate you so much for doing that. Thank you. Bless you. Well, I'm sorry, but I've got another one involving Tex. Jeannie will get a kick out of this one. Um, Paige and Donovan had started dating, but her father at the time didn't know it. <laughs> so she had to go to Cabell Huntington to get her gallbladder removed. Well, Tex came to pray with her. Well, before he started praying with her, they had already given her the goofy medicine before they could put her out. And of course, put it on an empty stomach, it adds to the fun. She, <laughs> he looks at her and he says, now Paige, I'm gonna start praying with you. She goes, okay. So he, he starts praying. And the more he prays, the louder she giggles and she laughs. And in true text fashion, he laughs with her and keeps praying. <laughs> and I thought, what, what a blessing for a man to not stop, but to laugh with her and pray with her. And then after, <laughs> She was done, after he was done praying with her, she looked at me and she said, gee, mommy, come here. I whispered, I went down, she went, mommy, make sure daddy doesn't know I'm dating a black boy. <laughs> I'm like, Paige. <laughs> but everything worked out. And 
we were all so blessed a year ago, like they were. Paige and Donovan grew up in this church with Tex, and he did their wedding ceremony a year ago. And we were blessed to have him and to have my mom and Jeannie. They wanted them to be the flower girls, and it was just a wonderful day. <laughs> so we had so many blessings. Bless you. Any others? <laughs> yeah, they they will. That's right. <laughs> he used to visit my mom all the time, and one day he came, and after the visit, he said, "Mary, would you like to see what I have in my car?" And she said, "What is it?" He said, "It's a bear skin." She said, no, I do not. <laughs> she, wouldn't, she wouldn't look at it. So I said, I do. I went out and it's real big, a bear that he had killed. Hmm. And he had the skin. And that's all she wouldn't even think about. I remember the first Sunday that Tex was here, and he said something to the effect of, uh, "Pose you all wondering why they call me Tex," and he said, "He he said I'm a legal Tex." And he said because the name on his birth certificate was Laban Frank Tex Fry, and I just thought that was pretty clever. Somebody had something in mind for for him, and then it's like. Uh, Chris t uh, touched on many a time he'd be standing up there and, and he said well I've got this sermon I've been working on it all week and it's been really coming to my heart and then he'd just take it and he'd go <laughs> throw it over his shoulder and uh, before he left he asked if anybody if there was any particular sermon that he, he, they would like for, to hear again and I told him it was the one about the baby ducks where the baby ducks kept going on them. And you all remember, they come out in his yard and they kept going, quack, 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 quack. And I don't remember the extent of the message, you know, was taking in the children, you know, and loving others, that kind of thing. But when I asked him that, he was really surprised. He said, you know, that was about the first or second sermon that I ever did here. And you still remember it 11 years later? I said, yeah, I guess it made an impression on me. <laughs> And I loved how sometimes he'd be in the middle of preaching and just stop and start singing. Oh, man, that man had a beautiful tenor voice. Kept trying to get him to join the choir. And, no, can't do that. Can't <laughs> do that. But we all loved him, and, and we will miss him. Any others? Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for these, these wonderful stories and memories that we have shared with each other. And Lord, we just pray that you just reached out and put our arm around Tex and remind him that we love him and we miss him and that we'll see him again one day. Well, we pray that you continue to stir these memories up amongst us, that it might bring a smile to our face as we remember our dear friend. Now, Father, we pray that you'll just go with us. And in Jesus' name we pray. No, oh, man. I'll invite Susie to come up now and she'll have a scripture reading for us. The scripture reading is Psalm 82. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. 
Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, if our kids want to come up, I'll pick on them for a while. Morning, guys. I'll give you a choice. Do you want to talk about windows or candles this morning? Candles. Okay, I'll take that. So, do you have any idea why we have these candles in church? Or why you carry the little fire down and light them? To let God in. You're close. It's, it's to remind us that God is here with us. Uh, so, you know, when, when we think back to that, uh, in fact, it wasn't too long ago, we had Pentecost. Remember when the, the fire came down from heaven and, uh, and resided on the disciples and they started talking about how great God was and everybody could hear it in their own language so they knew what was going on. The candles in church serve that kind of purpose. When you carry it in, it is a reminder that God is here with us. That the Holy Spirit is here with us so that we can look up on our table here at any time and just remember that no matter what's going on, no matter what we might be struggling with or what we might be rejoicing about, that God is with us. And then at the end of the service, when we sing our final song and we come and take the light, the candle and then take these candles out, it's not saying and now God is left. It's a reminder that as we go out, God goes with us. But it's not just God is here in this building and we come see him uh, once a week or so. It's God is with us wherever we go. Think you can remember that one? Not too hard? Okay. <laughs> Let's say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these young men. And we just pray you put a blessing upon their lives, a lamp in their life, Lord, that leaves them every step closer to you. And a hedge of protection that keeps them safe in this world. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. And amen. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> As we come to our time of prayer, who should be who should we be remembering this morning? Uh, I'll ask that you please keep Beth in your prayers. Uh, she has some. We'll call it unexplained pain. And uh, every test that we have says everything's functioning the way it's supposed to. And it's just, it's kind of a con concern. And I know some, there's been some folks in here that have had those where you've got symptoms that are going on. But every time you go to the doctor, they tell you you're as healthy as a horse. And she's in one of these situations. And we're just kind of waiting to see what the next step is, what the next test is. Uh, to try and figure out what's going on. So please just keep Beth in your prayers uh, and, uh, and our whole family. Others. Uh, of course, this goes without saying, uh, since we just had those wonderful testimonies to do with text, but please keep Devonna and Eric and Leslie in your prayers and all of Texas family. Uh, we've been communicating with Devonna a little, which I'm sure many of you all have too. She's going to have a hard time, as we well know. And also a, a young lady that works for me, Alyssa Bow. She, uh, she's expecting, but she's having some complications. And it's not very far along. Thank you. Did you say Alyssa? Yeah, Alyssa, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we found out this morning that Phyllis Fulton is not doing well at all. So uh, we ask that you... Continue to pray for her. Uh, she needs our prayers right now. Thank you. Nelda. I'm supposed to bring you and go pick on her, by the way. 
<laughs> Mom goes on Tuesday. Yeah, that's what I was told, was clear out your Tuesday had come with ginger, so. <laughs> Say it again, I'm sorry. Sonny Godfrey. I just ask that you be with uh, Sean and his family this week. Have they lost someone that was important to their family, a cousin, this past week, and they're uh, grieving that loss? So just uh, be with all them, please. Thank you. If, if, yeah, especially a certain counselor, right? <laughs> so for those at home that might not have heard, 4-H camp is this week, and we're asking for specific targeted prayers for campers and, and, and counselors, especially one sitting back here. So. Uh. <laughs> Any others? I ask that you pray for um, Paige and Donovan as they go on for new adventures. Um, Paige will starting be starting a new job on the 27th of this month, and they'll be moving into their house, I think, in August. So I pray for blessings on them. <laughs> Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you because we can see you at work in the miracles that you do in this world even today. And Lord, many of those miracles are sitting here this morning. So we have tangible evidence, Lord, that you do amazing things. As we gather around and as we have lifted up these different prayer concerns, Lord, there are those who in, are in need of healing, those who are in need of peace and comfort. Those who are scared and honestly, Lord, they just need to feel your touch and know that you are with them right now. We pray, Heavenly Father, for ministries that are going out, for, for counselors and campers, that campers are, are safe and enjoy, and that counselors are not only safe and enjoy, but are, are given the energy to make it through. And you would be with both and all of them. Father, we just ask that you hold all these that we have lifted, as well as those unspoken burdens, Lord, that we now lift to you. Father, we thank you, for we know that you hear us. And we lift all these up as we pray the prayer in which you taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And amen. Will those who are helping with the offering please come forward?
thank you for these gifts, Lord, these gifts of finances, these gifts of time and energy and presence, Lord. And we now just dedicate them all to your service, Lord, that may they be used for the building up of your kingdom, Lord, and we dedicate them now for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to say a few words before we sing. So I was contacted yesterday by Robin, and she told me she wouldn't be here, and she asked if I would lead the choir this morning. And she said I could just pick anything that I thought the choir would know. And I said, okay, well, I'll go through, and I'll, I'll find what, what I think. And I'll tell you something. Uh, I don't know. After she said that to me, I thought about it all day. I thought... I, I don't know. I just thought about what we could sing, and for some reason, the 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 song, you know, just a little talk with Jesus. It's a hymn that we all know. We have a choir arrangement of it. It just was on my heart. It just I don't know. As soon as she said that, that was on my mind, and I would try to go another direction to pick something else, and then for some reason, I would end up back at this song. So, and it was in my head all day and all morning. This morning, I was singing it. So I was like, well, I guess that's what we're going to sing this morning. So, the, <laughs> and I, but I want to tell you. I, you know, uh, and uh, li life is really, you know, in, in, we all go through this, but you know, it's thrown a lot of, a lot of curveballs at me in the last few years, and at, a lot of you it does, you know, life does, all of us, it throws us things that we don't know what to do with, and we don't know how to handle it, we don't know where to go, but this this song, I mean, uh, through everything that I've been through, and I know many of you, if you just, if you just stop, and you just you just talk to him. You just you just put out there what's on your mind. It it really does help. It it, it he even if he's not I I don't want to say he's speaking to you or something, but it does help so much. It it gives you so much clarity that you thought you, that you you couldn't do on your own. You couldn't have on your own. And that's that's my testimony this morning. That through everything, God's been right there with me. And I've talked to him through tons of things. I talk to him all the time, and he gives me guidance. And he he tells me it's going to be okay, Cameron. And that's a that's my true testimony this morning. And so that's why we're singing this song because that's on my heart this morning.
Preach it. Preach it. <laughs> Take safe travels, Kevin. Now I invite you as we to stand as we sing our hymn, Spirit Song, on page 347. This morning, we're going to begin in the book of Amos, chapter 7, and what might be a familiar scripture, it's one that you see in, uh, you know, the uh, Hobby Lobby type signages every so often, but uh, it's a, a conversation between God and Amos, and this is, this is his response in chapter 7, picking up in verse 7, and we'll just do chapter, uh, verses 7 through 9. Says, this is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. And then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate. And the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. You've never seen the plumb line? Usually it's with a picture that looks something like that. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that we are blessed with this opportunity to go into your word and to hear your voice. And with that in mind, Lord, I pray that it would be my voice, Lord, that dims and goes quiet, 
and it would be your voice that would be heard. Father, we just give you thanks. I pray you speak to us all this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I can remember going through some of the tools that my grandfather left my dad. And when I came about this piece of lead shaped like a triangle, I looked at dad and I said, what is that? And my dad said, that is a plumb bob. And I did not believe my dad. This was the same man who had taken me snipe hunting. So when he told me, when he told me it was called a plumb bob, I thought he was completely pulling my leg and then was trying to see what he could get me to do this time. But if you don't know, this is how a, you know, a level would work. Those wonderful little things with bubbles that we have now. This is the ancient version of that. You would build a wall, you would lay, you know, lower it down and hold it up against the wall. And if you, if you did a good job building your wall, then it was at least you know, pretty close, if not touching. If not, it was way out ahead and you were not level in any, mind, in any way whatsoever. And I love how God will often use commonplace items, not just parables, but common things. When, when God is talking to fishermen, he uses fishing examples. When he's talking to builders, he uses building examples because he said, what do you see, Amos? Amos has not been a professional prophet by any means. He's been a tree trimmer and a couple other things. He's, he's not you know, an educated clergy, I guess is the way to phrase it. But Amos got to be the one who to go tell all the people what God wanted him to tell. And Amos goes, well, I see the plumb line. And he goes, you need to go tell my people Israel that I have held a plumb line to them. And so now they stand against Israel in condemnation and in judgment. Interesting to note, this is a response earlier to their call to let justice roll down like a river. And now, I imagine they didn't expect it, they're the ones who are being called to account. I love this. You see this happen in churches a lot. And it's one of those wonderful things that you get to experience as a preacher and pastor uh, where you, you bring a message and then you get the responses you get don't always uh, match it. One of my favorite examples I've ever had of this was one of the churches, one of the first churches I ever uh, spoke to. The Lord, the Lord just laid, it was not an easy sermon to preach whatsoever. I knew some of the things that were going on in the church and it was one of those things that just throughout the entire work week I was like, Lord, are you sure this is what you want uh, me to talk about? And the Lord just confirmed that over and over and over again, much like you're, you're going to sing this song, Cameron. <laughs> and after I preached the sermon, I was expecting just mean glances, but everybody was nodding their head and going on. And as I was shaking, shaking hands coming out, the main instigator in the church looked at me and she said, Preacher! And I was waiting for it. You know, you're meddling. And what she said was, I'm sure glad you preached that. They needed to hear it. And we should have. <laughs> Sometimes our call to God of God, won't you just do something about it? We say forgetting that God can be looking at us the whole lot of time. When we ask God to intervene, we can forget that we're within his sight as well. But this is, this is not the only time that God has shown uh, the world where it stands. Not the only time where he has given an example. One of the more familiar passages that uh, speaks like this is in John chapter 3. And it's the, the, the scriptures that we know so well, or at least continuing with that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now we like putting a period there and leaving it off there because that's the pretty part. And we like the pretty part, but not so much the stove topping part. Because when he continues, he says, because whoever believes is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. Light has come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. 
The judgment, he says, is this. Light has come into the world. Do we ever consider Jesus coming into this world as a judgment? I've never thought of it by, by, by that way whatsoever, but God says the judgment is this. I sent the light and you chose darkness instead. I sent the tangible expression of who I am, a part of the Trinity. God made flesh standing with you. You who have been studying my scriptures, you who have been studying my word to look for this very moment. And there I stood and you didn't know me. Why? Because, and the ver verbiage changes here, talking to everyone, you prefer darkness. You prefer darkness because it hides your deeds. And it makes, that statement makes us face the, the fact that sometimes things that we have done, sometimes things that we have said or thought are not done with the best intentions. And we go, no, 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 go back. Go back to that part that says Jesus came to save everybody. No, I don't want to hear this stuff. That hurts. But it's the truth of the matter is that God still holds that plumb line, that plumb bulb, and says, I have laid the level for you. And level is my son. Zero is my son. And the one thing that we have come to understand throughout of it all is... We can't reach zero. We can't reach level. We never have been able to do it. You can look all throughout. We have the entire Old Testament to show you that even people who are called things like a man after the very heart of God continually messed up and did things that we would go, why in the world would you still call him that? But the good thing is, and the blessing about all of it is, level, we're not called to reach it. Christ came so that by his works, by his actions, by his sacrifices, we could be made well. We could be made right. Because the struggle is, all of us struggle with that, that darkness. Ephesians says it as clear as day. This is Ephesians 2. It says, and, and you were dead in the trespasses and sin in which you once walked. Following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work and the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived. If you've got your Bible, underline that. Among whom we all once lived. All of us have this wonderful thing called a past. And we're hoping we can say it's in the past. Among whom all we once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we by, were by nature children of wrath like the rest of humanity. At one point in time, we, will, we were all at war with God. That's another thing he uses. Enemies with God is another language that the Bible uses. But praise God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we can stand here and say that I have gone from being a child of wrath to a child of the king. I got adopted. How about you? Amen. That's right. And now when we look at the plumb line, it's for something different. It's not a reminder that there's this, this level that we have to achieve or else it's a guide that says, look what Jesus did. Look how he treated people. Look how he loved others. You have your guide. Now go and live. Go and live like the one who showed us how to live. Go and love like the one who showed us how to love. It's no longer a reminder of condemnation, but of good. How our lives and actions should reflect Christ to the world. So when we face decisions, when, <laughs> when we get, when we have, when we're, you know, sitting patiently with our blinker on, waiting for that person to back out of the good parking spot and somebody else whips in and cuts us off from it, we now have the guide. How should I treat them? How should I love them? And you go, but you don't understand. I was waiting for that parking spot. Yeah. Jesus had some pretty rough things happen to him and yet he still loved. It might not, it might just be as simple as going, you know, good day. 
And that's as close as you get, then amen. That's better than the alternative. But it's holding to the reminder that, you know, he forgave me of a whole lot. And if he can forgive me, then he has the right to say, now go and love as you have been loved and forgive as you have been forgiven. It's never go out and do this thing that I haven't done. It's as I have done for you and with you and on by your behalf. Now go out and show that to the world. Because we have, almost time that right, we have the example. He is our example. So may you seek Christ and measure your life against him and not anything else. Another way of saying this is you are not as, to be called to be as good as and then whatever name that you ten, tend to throw that in there. You'll never find that in the Bibles anywhere. The closest thing Paul says, if you can't imitate Christ, then start by imitating me. Because if you can imitate me as poor and as broken as I am, then maybe one day it'll be easier to imitate Christ. To discover how much you are loved and how much we are all loved, may you look at Christ and set him as your example. And, rem and remind ourselves and maybe be revealed to ourselves that we are called to love and live just like he did. Would you pray with me? Lord, speak to our hearts and remind us, as we have been shown so many times, your love never fails. You choose us every time. And you have called us to do the same in the lives of others. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand now as we sing our closing hymn. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Page 348, and we will sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
Don't forget the PPRC is meeting in the library. Beyond that, may you be blessed as you have been filled, not just to the brim, but into the overflow. May you, may you go from here and just splash that overflow on everybody that encounter them. Maybe for the first time or maybe for the millionth, they would encounter God and be drawn closer again. God bless each one of you.